So let's talk about Guillain-Barre syndrome. And, you know, first and foremost, most people struggle to say this one too, and it's called Guillain-Barre or um, other things. And, you know, I'm not really sure exactly how it's, how, to be, how, how it's supposed to be pronounced, but every time I've heard a doctor say it, they can call it Guillain-Barre or just GBS to keep it simple. So what is it? So it is an autoimmune or an immune attacking disease. And um, the thing that's different about this one is usually it happens after an infection or virus. So um, years ago when the H1N1 virus was out, a lot of people were getting this after their H1N1 virus, but it's also very common after a lot of respiratory infections and things like that as well. Um, we diagnose it mostly off symptoms, and we're going to talk about what those symptoms are in a minute. Um, we can also rule out other causes, like through um, a, a cerebral spinal fluid analysis, make sure there's not something else going on. Um, and then two weeks after symptoms start, we can get an EMG and nerve conduction studies to confirm, um, you know, the um, issue or process that's going on. So what does Guillain-Barre or GBS look like? So um, this one is different in that it's acute. So, you know, a lot of the other ones were talked about were chronic progressive. This one is acute and it's ascending. In other words, it's going up progressive weakness. This actually can be almost like a progressive paralysis. So like for a patient that I had back when I worked rehab, she woke up on Christmas morning um, and her feet were numb and tingling. And then slowly, you know, she started kind of getting numbness and tingling and like weakness in her legs. And then it kind of went up to um, her thighs and then it was up to her hips. Um, and then she got to the point where um, she was having trouble breathing. And that's pretty much what happens. It, it, it ascends, it goes up, it starts at your feet and works its way up. And it's um, paresthesias, weakness, loss of muscle tone. Um, they can have cardiovascular symptoms and they can go either hypotensive, like orthostatic hypotension, or they could go hypertensive. They can also have bradycardias, heart blocks, and a lot of other cardiac issues because they, it also messes with the sympathetic nervous system. Um, they can have bowel bladder dysfunctions as well as a pain. And they can have like, you know, the loss of sensation. They can also have hypersthesia where they have um, really intense pain or burning. Um, and of course, the most serious thing I'm going to worry about with this patient is respiratory failure, because if their muscles are slowly getting weak or losing function or losing tone, um, if it gets to my diaphragm, my diaphragm is a muscle. And if it gets to that, this is what happens to a lot of patients with GBS is that it gets to their diaphragm and their diaphragm is too weak for them to take breaths. And so then, of course, they're going to need to be put on a ventilator. So um, they may require that ventilator support and also hemodynamic support. Again, it can be hypertensive or hypotensive. So depending on what, um, where their hemodynamics are, they might need support on either end of that. Um, the main treatments, and these are only really effective in those first couple weeks, so getting prompt treatment is key, um, is uh, what's called IVIG um, and then plasmapheresis. And how does this help? So effectively what these treatments do is they get rid of antigens that are causing the problem. So something is um, beating up the nervous system, um, causing this reaction, causing this um, ascending paralysis. And it's going to help to get rid of some of those guys that are fighting or trying to, you know, beat up your body system. Um, it's going to slow them down or stop them, or at least stop them from replicating. Um, and so um, it's going to help to improve a lot of those symptoms. And these are both pretty equally matched. They both are pretty effective. It just kind of depends on the doctor. Or they may do both. Um, assessments are going to be key as the nurse. Um, so I need to monitor for complications. They can have neurological compromise, confusion, and other things. So I need to watch their neuro system and safety closely. Respiratory is probably going to be one of your top assessments because, again, they can have such instability and ability to support their own airway. And it can come up pretty quickly over a period of hours. Um, like that patient that I mentioned, like by the end of the, by the afternoon, she was at the point where she couldn't breathe. And that's really quick. Um, and that's pretty scary stuff. Sometimes it can take you know, days for them to be at their max symptoms, everyone's a little different. Um, we do need to do a very good neurovascular um, assessment, see where they're at, like see like, okay, where are you numb? Where are you tingling? Um, you know, what are you feeling? Are you having paresthesias? You know, we want to check their pulses. We want to make sure they're getting good blood flow and good perfusion. Um, musculoskeletal to see where they're at motor wise. Can they move anything? What are their um, functional abilities? Um, are they weak or are they completely paralyzed? What's happening? Um, and then of course, cardiovascular monitoring that hemodynamic stability. What's their heart rate? What's their blood pressure? What's their respiratory? rate um, and how can we support them as a whole. So the respiratory and cardiovascular, of course, are going to be our two top priorities, but we really need to monitor for those changes in their assessments to see if they're getting better or worse. 
I want to support nutrition in this patient because more than likely, um, you know, this is something that it can they can recover from it, um, but it's a very, very long recovery and they're going to need a lot of support and nutrition to help um, in that recovery. Um, we're going to uh, use a lot of uh, alternative therapies, a lot, and when I say alternative, I mean more like collaborative therapies, like occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, um, and really working on their mobility. So the lady I work with, it, it took over a year, but she eventually got to the point where she could feel her feet again. Um, she was able eventually to learn to drive again and learn to walk. Um, but you know, um, it was not, she doesn't walk like you or I walk. So um, it just definitely depends on the patient, how early they catch it and how quickly they get it treated. Um, but there's definitely um, a possibility for improvement. So a lot of the other autoimmune and um, other disorders we talked about, um, they're chronic progressive, they're not getting better. This one possibly can get better. It just kind of depends on the patient, but obviously very, very serious disorder that we need to treat promptly. So yeah, so that's it for Guillain-Barre syndrome or GBS. See you next time.